Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program with Down to Earth Astronomy. Last time we did some successful missions to both Moon and Minmus. We didn't go into orbit, we just made uh, some few flybys, we gathered some data. We do need a tiny, tiny amount of data in order to, um, to be able to actually get a very useful note where we get some larger engines. So we've decided to go out and investigate this strange, strange object that seems to be very close to, uh, to the space center, as you can see out here. Um, so we, uh, we've devised, or the Kerbals have devised this very tiny car. It doesn't go very quickly. I could probably have used the, um, a rocket engine to go faster. Um, but they decided to play it safe and just drive out there in a straightforward car. We're going to run out of electricity here. It looks like we are. We should have gone for rocket engines. How are we doing for... Stop that. How are we doing for electricity charge? See, we are actually out of electricity because it's the night time. <sighs> okay. Rocket engines it is. And in best Kerbal fashion, we very quickly just strap a rocket engine to uh, to the back of our car. We're going to use the limited amount of electricity charge that we have just to get off the ramp here. Very carefully. And I think now... We should now be able to just use this not so powerful engine because these are not really that effective in the atmosphere, but that's all part of the plan. And at absolutely no time at all, we actually made it out here to this strange, strange object. So let's see what the instruments has to say about it. We're going to start by locking pressure, which seems to be pretty standard. Nothing to, uh, to go by there. Maybe the temperature has something special to say. Nope. What about the goo container? There's a goo container like this. It doesn't seem like our instruments has anything special to say. So uh, we're just gonna go and do some basic reports. And then we're gonna recover. And we're gonna hope when we get back to the space center that this is gonna give us the last little bit of science that we needed. Definitely did. 18 science gathered very quickly. Which allows us to unlock heavy rocketry. Which is gonna give us access to bigger boosters and bigger rockets, including both the uh, skipper engine, which is going to be very useful, and also the um, poodle engine, which is going to be, I think this is very effective in vacuum, if I recall correctly. Yes, look at that. A lot of thrust in vacuum. So, we're going to research this, and um, then we're going to go in and we're going to have a look at what we actually have available, because I think the next mission would probably be to go for a simple single site landing mission to moon um so launch something up to the moon land it do a quick quick survey on the on the area or oh, wait maybe maybe if we take that car design oh we shouldn't do need bigger we need better wheels though i'm thinking if we could take a car and land a car on the moon and then drive that around instead we could actually go from bio to bio fairly cheaply and if we add on the day side we should then be able to gain the power through solar cells it will take a long time and we might run into problems with not having enough crew members i mean if the wheels get gets destroyed we have an issue because we can only bring one crew on board it's it's not straightforward but let's see what i can came up come up with Okay, so I've decided just to go with a simple lander here. So this is going to be very, very basic return vehicles, pretty much as basic as they're going to come. Um, so let's build ourselves something. So what we'll need, we'll need, we'll need some science experiments, right? So we're going to need a science junior container, and we are just going to strap our equipment to the outside. there like so oh hold on will we need a ladder can i rotate this maybe like so and then put this off to the side and then put because we need to be able to get in and out of this fairly easily and i don't want to I mean gravity on the moon is pretty low so that's not a big issue but i would really love 
if we have a, oh there we go we do have a ladder so just gonna attach a few of those just so we have something to hold on to so we can go down the ladder and pick up our experiments here we don't have to make it all the way down to the ground because that's okay we can fly with the with that then we need oh hold on but i would really love if we could ditch all of the experiments i should actually put the tank here because i want to ditch this i don't want to bring this back because i think this is enough this stage alone should be enough to bring us back to um should we just break back from the moon i think okay i'm gonna keep designing this and we're gonna see how light of craft i can actually make okay here we have our lander craft i think this should do it so we have small engines out here three of them that should hopefully be enough to take us down to the surface we have the science experiments down here these are just attached attached to the side here. there's no decouplers or anything um then we have all our science experiments down here so we can just collect that from just one location and then once we want to take off we if we have spare fuel of course we're going to lift off with uh, these three engines first as soon as they're empty we're going to ditch the tanks we're going to ditch the science experiments because we're going to store everything up here and then just have that stage and that engine which should be plenty to uh, take us back to Copen. so now of course these will need to start retracted we will just need to find a way to get this thing to the moon and in true kerbal fashion i have of course gone completely overkill with the lifter compared to what the hell we have a small part in there oh well it'll probably disappear uh, completely overkill compared to what we actually have to lift um seven skipper engines in an asparagus launcher so i think that should give us plenty of a uh, thrust oh i'm not gonna make this mistake this time i have a tendency to always forget solar panels but not today today we will have plenty of power so let's uh, let's take this out and um this is gonna be the first i haven't had this on the land launch pad even oh hold on did i put the launch clamps you should probably put those in the right group there we go srs on throttle up and is it too heavy for the engines looks like it's too heavy for the engines come on burn that fuel yes no! Clear that. Yes. <laughs> so the skipper engines are not the most powerful. I think I'm more used to the main sails, which is a lot more powerful. But else we are burning fuel, we're not going to get much altitude out of the first set of engines. That's pretty much going to be nothing i think we're still going more sideways than anything else i cannot afford to tilt this over because we do not have enough thrust to push us upwards we are accelerating now we're almost done with the first set of engines oh look at that sunrise or sunset sunrise i'm not really sure okay now we're actually beginning to get some uh, some proper speed here nope that's not good okay let's rethink this okay take two this time which i just took up the top took off the top stage of uh, of the site booster so let's try and see uh, how this thing flies it's still heavy off the launch pad but it's a lot better and hopefully by the time the first set of tanks um runs out we are gonna have picked up enough speed that we can do a clean separation the problem i think last time was we were going so slowly that they would go back and, uh, and hit the spacecraft but if we're going faster and we have more power to wait then i think we have a good chance of actually having a clean separation 
problem is with these tanks before, before we stabilize the top here. It begins to be a little wobbly at the top. It's not too bad. I mean, I've launched uh, I've launched more noodle spacecraft than this. Let's see, we get a clean separation. Yes, we do. Hope someone does not catch that. Because that would hurt. Anyway, from here I hope it's going to be a pretty straightforward launch. Otherwise, you will probably notice. And there we have it. After a pretty standard launch, we finally got this thing into a very low orbit, around 100 kilometers up. And we still have plenty of fuel in this stage. So, it doesn't accelerate too quickly, but I guess that's okay. Let's start by uh, setting up a uh, encounter with, uh, with the moon. So, uh, let's set that there. Let's look at our inclination. 0. 0.6 degrees, that's okay. I actually think we might be pretty close to a decent spot. Uh, let's see what happens when we get closer here. We actually get an encounter right there. We are... So the spacecraft have been orientated in approximately the right direction. So that when we get down here, we should be pointing pretty close to our... Yes, good. Retrograde note, we're gonna do auto. We still have the main fuel tank here, so we have plenty of power. And we're going to begin decircularizing all of it. I'm sorry, uh, circularizing our orbit. So we're going to get captured here. There we go. And we're actually in a pretty good position. I think I want to try and hit down in this crater here. Hopefully close to the edge, not too close. So we're going to land on a, on a hill, but down this crater will probably be good. Then we have maybe have a chance to go up um, if we have fuel and jump up and uh, do a second biome, though we do not have the uh, science experiments that are actually pointless. So let's just go for that, um, for that crater there, just to get the to get that science. But right at the horizon here, because I don't want to kill too much of my uh, uh, vertical speed. I just want to kill my horizontal speed. And I can keep track of it by looking at my retrograde node. We can see now we're beginning to fall down. So now we're falling down a little bit too quickly. So now we're going to point up to the retrograde. Beginning to kill... To kill that speed. Now we're down to 100 meters a second, which is good. And we're going to follow... Because Jebediah has that skill now, we can just follow the retrograde node. We can look for the sun. There it is. Oh, and then we can now see the shadow. And again, I'm going to push downwards here. As you can see, I'm trying to push out towards the horizon. So I pushed my retrograde node up towards Zenit here. There we go. We are now falling down, sh straight down. Oh, never go without thrust. Problem is, and I've done this before, we have so much extra thrust right now that, that just keeping at, at even the slightest amount of uh, a thrust will slow us down very slowly here we're down to around 30 i think is good then we're gonna pull back on the th thrust we don't want to go too slow we begin to drift sideways that would be bad now pretty close now to get down to around 10 meters a second i think pull back on the throttle even more And at 3 meters a second, there we go. That is touchdown, the first Kerbal on the moon. I think we should go out right away. No, first, we need to start our experiments. So, going to observe the materials bay. Look at all that lovely science. Wow, a hundred science for that. 
We're gonna measure the temperatures. Not that that's gonna be very interesting. It's probably pretty cold. We are going to look at the pressure data. It's probably gonna be pretty low. What about the goo? What does the goo have to say? Good. We're gonna do a crew report. Uh, yes. And EVA. Let's go. And gently touch down. And from here we can do our EVA report. Nicely done. Can we, can we plant a flag? Yes. And there we have it. Ooh, site name. Ooh, ooh. First landing. We did it. Wait, can you climb? Ah, you can climb the flag. <laughs> Ta-da! And board. And all data was successfully stored. So we still have plenty of fuel in these three stages. So there's really no reason why we shouldn't use it to get us back home. Okay, so the moon is moving in this direction, right? And we want to, have to drop our velocity. So we actually want to move out in this direction over here. So I'm just going to look at where we are. That means we're going to head out in the direction we came from. So compared to the sun, when we look at the sun, it's pretty much the opposite direction. So that's the sun. So we came from over there, right? So that's probably the direction we want to head. <sighs> okay, let's get uh, get back to, uh, to Kerbin. Safely back after a uneventful landing, we're back at the space center, and uh, let's see. Three experience gained, nice. Let's see what we can unlock with this. Uh, again, true to what I've said, I want to unlock a level at a time, so we should have plenty. These are what to we should just have enough to unlock all of these. Actually, there we go. There we go. And there we go. A little less, not that much. So we should begin to plan for the next. Next mission will maybe be a mission to either the moon again, which I'll probably do off camera. Or, or very similar, completely the same rocket, just going to Minmus instead. Um, I think I might want to do that just, you know, to get a little bit of science from Minmus. So uh, you know what? I think I'm just gonna go and uh, and do a quick minus run, and then we'll uh, look at uh, at the data and see what we can get, and then plan for for the future. And we're back again from Minmus, and we can now begin to work on the future. Let's see where we want to go. So, so far we got we got our own neighborhood within our grasp. Now we can go to the moon, we can go to Minmus, and we can return. So I can see two approaches here. Either we can maybe begin to look at multi-crewed missions, so bringing more kerbals on board that would allow us to make a vehicle that could jump around on the surface, go to multiple biomes and to pick up even more science from the moon. 
alternatively, we could begin to expand a, uh, a satellite network, which is one of the main things I actually want to do. So let's see, because here we get the opportunity to get Kubernetes modules for space stations, and we get the Mark II command pod, so we can bring up to three crew members. Atlanta can, nice. A service bay, huh? Okay. Mainsail engine, that's gonna help us if we're gonna launch heavier craft. So if we're gonna do a moon jumper that goes from bio to bio, we might want to get the mainsails and of course the um, the crew pods. We have enough for. I think we have enough for three notes, depending on the price. Here we have lots of smaller engines, which might be useful here. Uh, what else do we have? Clampertron docking ports, also stations, good. Bigger fairings, also very good. Grabber unit to catch asteroids, something about planes. Wheels, bigger heat shields. More reaction wheels and thrusters and a mobile processing lab. Okay, so after looking through the notes, I've decided that because we have the capabilities to go to both Moon and Minmus and there are plenty of biomes for us to still dis uh, discover, we have plenty of knowledge that we can harvest from Moon and Minmus, I decided to be begin looking at our satellite network. Um, so what I think we will need for that is better solar cells is probably nice, but not a necessity. Um, the relay antennas, though, is most likely going to be a necessity, and the small stacky decoupler is also going to be very, very handy. So I think we're going to research this note. Let's see what else we can get here that's going to help us towards building a satellite. Okay, I think the last one we're going to get is these solar panels here. Because with these two, we can now begin to build a very basic satellite and then just build a ton of them and just swarm Kerbin with these satellites. We are also going to build surface stations because, of course, we do not have the surface stations with us in this playthrough. So I will have to go out and I will have to build my own surface stations. And for now, we're just going to go with the antennas we have. But hopefully, we're going to be able to build a pretty decent network here that... Um, that's going to give us good coverage around Kerbin, so that we will always have a connection to um, to the space center. Um, and then later on, we can put in a higher orbit, we can then put a bigger relay station when we get access to bigger antennas. But that is the plan for the future, for now. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give a like down below, and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.